the opening day of the first World Tour event of the year. It's stage one of the Santos Tour Down Under. We're now heading away from Nuri Upter to Angerston in the beautiful Barossa Valley. And the weather is absolutely stunning today. A uh, high of 30 degrees Celsius, about 88 degrees Fahrenheit. Jens Voigt starting his last season at 42 years of age. Well, he claims it's going to be his last season. Everybody a little bit relaxed before the start of the day, but they do realize that there's a sting in the tail at the end of stage one of the Santos Tour Down Under this year, an ever popular returning to this race for the first time since 2010, Cadell Evans, former world champion. Yes, yeah, so will it be Cadell Evans or will it be Simon Gerrans or someone else? This is the new Australian champion, Gerrans, signing on for this six-day race on stage number one which tours uh, much of the state of South Australia. The winner of the opening race on Sunday, the hors d'oeuvre, if you like, although it's not part of the Santos Tour Down Under, this was the People's Choice Classic. Over 50 kilometres in downtown Adelaide, two great German sprinters and Marcel Kittel getting the better of the German champion, Andre Greipel, in front of 95,000 people. Well, this is the route today, 135 kilometres, Paul, and... Uh, it's going to be pretty warm out there today as we make our start from uh, Nuriutpa heading to Angerston on what is the San Remo Pasta stage. Yes, it starts off with the two circuits around the beautiful Barossa Valley, but when they come in for the third lap of the area around here, then it starts to get just a little bit grippy because then they will attempt to Mengele Hill, and that's where I think we'll see the decisions being made. So the blue line leads back to Angerson. They'll see the finishing line twice as well before they hit it for the third and final time. All set to rock and roll here. Uh, 138 riders now. Sadly, without Chris Sutton, the sky rider who crashed out two days ago when he broke his wrist in uh, the circuit race in Adelaide. And this is the move here right from the gun today. In the red jersey, it is Will Clark being trailed by Neil van der Ploeg, who last year, well, two years ago now, he got fourth in the Australian Road Race Championships in Ballarat. A very strong performance indeed. He's 26 years of age. Will Clark is 28. Clark, a previous winner in this very event in Stirling, where we go tomorrow, and at the same finishing line. So he's gone a day early today. Well, Luke Durbridge is the man on the front. His nickname Turbo Durbo, a very good individual time trialist, but here he's actually riding for the account of his team. He's doing the pacemaking to make sure that two-man leading breakaway doesn't get too much of an advantage, because he knows the other teams will hot it up down towards the finish and that breakaway group theoretically should get have pulled back into the fold towards the end of the afternoon well here's the start of the sprint and look at this big acceleration there coming from Clark in the red trousers there and uh, it's so important these little time bonuses early on in the race to keep yourself up to the top of the overall standings well van der Ploeg did well to hold off but that was close but that was a Will Clark who got the three second time bonus van der Ploeg uh, has got second now we wait for the arrival there uh, of the main pack Let's have a look at that again. I thought he was about to slip out of this one. I thought Van der Ploeg had done enough, but he just pushes his bike over the line. Will Clark, he gets the three seconds. And there's the gap. Three minutes and 35 seconds at the moment. And here comes the field. And it looks like it is uh, Giant Shimano on the front. This is Kittle, the man who has already had one victory uh, on Sunday in the People's Choice Classic. He is leading out here the bearded Simon Geschke, and that indicates he is their man long term this week because he can climb and Geschke cruises away and gets a second bonus and that could be important as the race now heads through Seppelsfield. Each year hundreds of thousands of visitors travel to the Barossa. A popular place for them to visit is the local farmers market where you can get seasonal foods ripened to perfection and picked just the night before. If you don't want to lift a finger, many of the award-winning restaurants make their meals from produce sourced locally, especially at the farmers market. Match with the world famous wines from the region, and you know, I can't think of a better way to spend an afternoon in the Barossa Valley. This is the sprint now. Will Clark just looking to see if Van der Ploeg is going to make a move. He's a good sprinter, Van der Ploeg, if he wants to be. Riding in the white colours of the Uni SA. Well, it looks as though they are fighting out these small time bonuses. Paul, at the moment. And uh, Will Clark, is he going to make this one his? I think it's uh, last time through, but it was Van der Ploeg. And Van der Ploeg is having none of it. Clark made a mistake there. Yeah, I'll tell you what. Oh, 
Uh, right on the line, too, uh, and I must confess, I couldn't split them there. Let's see if the helicopter might show something on that one. But uh, Van der Ploeg taking life very seriously. Here's the replay for you now. It's Van der Ploeg on the right. Yes, he gets it. It's quite clear from the helicopter, and he gets the three-second time run, so he's got them both uh, so far. Yeah, well, he sprinted perfectly here, Phil. He waited to get himself into the slipstream of the, the rider on the, the left-hand side in the red shorts, and he came out of that slipstream and just lunged for the line there to get that victory by a well-timed well lunge for the line mm. by just uh, a couple of centimetres, but that's all that counts. Well, Garmin Sharps are taking over here, the sprinting style of Nathan Harser, the Queenslander, on the left of our picture, but everybody's trying to get in on the mix here. It's only one second they're racing for, Paul, but they're really giving it some real... Uh, sprinting power here. Rockas in the center left of our picture. He's looking up to see, wondering where this line is. This is the rider who's done so well. Simon Gerrans has launched, only chasing a second, could be significant. And Cadell, it looked like... But this Gerrans who gets it. Yeah, but uh, very, Simon very interestingly, it was, I thought it was Simon Gerrans, but it was Danilo Race coming in there from BMC Racing. Now, what he was trying to do was take the time bonus seconds away. Gerrans, wow. national champion of Australia, Phil, comes out very, very early on to say, I want to win this bike race. That might be significant. It's only a second, but you know, this race has been won with two riders on exactly the same time. So literally every second does count. And when you see somebody the quality Gerrans chase that, now that's a good pointer. Will Clark changing down five kilometers to the KOM. It's all about to blow up, I'd say. And the peloton are running for him now. He's about four kilometers. Oh, there's the catch. So it's all happened. We're all together about four kilometers from the top of the climb. Well, this is all about really the, uh, the battle for the corner of Mengla Hill now. And you can see uh, the speed. They're trying to take advantage of that crosswind to stretch the main field. You can see riders because of this going straight off the back. There's the corner. Still Team Sky pretty much in control going around the front end of that corner. First man onto the climb, Richie Port. Richie Port, the man from Tasmania, the first ever Australian to win the early season classic stage race between Paris and Nice. Port now moves up. He's got good form, a brilliant bronze medalist in the national championships just a week ago in Bunning Yong. Well, and that looks as though we may have Rowan Jennings just behind him there at the moment too. That's Richie Port in about fifth or sixth position. Yes, He's riding is. just in it front of uh, Garen Thomas. It's Nathan Earl. They're almost twins. Well, Nathan Earl, he only got 24 hours notice to come here uh, because of the fracture to the wrists of Chris Sutton, who finished fourth with that fractured wrist on Sunday after crashing, had to withdraw after a visit to the hospital. So Nathan Earl was told to quickly get into uh, Adelaide and start with the Team Sky. He's right on the front just now. They're both Tasmanians, uh, no pun intended. They look very similar. Um, even this morning, Richie Port was saying we're very lucky with you know, having lost Chris Sutton to a fractured wrist, unfortunately. Oh. We have a crash. Well, chain off by the look, but he could have been a fall. That's uh, just gone down there. Is Frank Schleck involved in that, number 41? Well, this is why you have to ride at the front. Uh, even if it's not that important, uh, you've got to ride at the front because uh, just over on the right-hand side, it looks as if uh, Cadell Evans was uh, slowed down a fraction by that, scuttling up the outside in the red and black jersey to make sure he too stays near to the front. But again, that's all it takes uh, at the front end of the main field, a little touch of wheels or a tray, a chain dropping off. You can see in fourth position is Richie Porter, sixth position a little bit further back behind him, Garen Thomas. Remember, Garen Thomas won that incredible stage two last year with a, a very daredevil last minute attack. We'll see what's happening behind because these riders, as you can see, and there's some movie star riders who've got delayed in that crash. Emmanuel uh, Viti, number 122, and perhaps more importantly, Gutierrez also there, one, two, three. The two riders unhitched from the back on the climb of. Uh, Mengler Hill here. There's Jose Ivan Gutierrez, former time trial and road racing champion of Spain. So it gives you an indication of just how hard they've hit this climb. It hasn't started to split up yet, but as Robbie McEwen was saying just a little bit earlier, the start of the climb is very difficult, but in fact, it's sometimes much more difficult once you go over the summit because it drags on. There's the summit as they curl the way around to where the big cherry picker is. Uh, but this is a very good fast pace. And because the wind is coming left of our picture to the right and pushing the riders over, it's not cracking the peloton, Rob. No, but this is the place, this slight left-hander, this is where the road kicks up again and it starts to get really difficult. You saw the gears go down, Haas get out of the saddle. The riders start to labour a little bit more. This is the hardest part of the climb now, and it stays steep like this for another few hundred metres, and after that, there's no respite. The climb drags on and on and on. 
and slowly but surely you'll see guys crack, go out the back door. But this, right, this race is ripe for a big attack. Yes, and uh, that's why they're trying to soften it up. That's why Team Sky have put the pressure on uh, 10 or 15 kilometres before we actually came to the start of this climb to soften up the opposition to making it a little bit more difficult for the sprinters. Maybe put the sprinters into a little bit of oxygen jet before they started the climb and prevent them from recovering over the top and getting back into the main field on the descent. We're going to go over the finishing line of the climb shortly, but it's not the finish of the climb, as Robin McEwen has told us. And psychologically, that's a bitter blow for riders who are having trouble on the climb. Uh, they'll tend to ease up and find they can't get back. Good pacemaking by Nathan Haas on the Garmin Sharp team. There's a split midway down the peloton now as they start to crack up. And Caleb Ewan, the sprinter, is finding the high speed up the climb at 19 years of age a little bit too quick for him today. Yeah, but don't discount this young kid. 19 years of age. Uh, I remember watching Robbie McEwen when he was only 19 years of age and he learned to handle himself on the climbs. I think Caleb Ewan has come here to learn. We'll talk a lot more about him over the next 10 or 15 years. I'll tell you what, Robbie, Nathan Earl's doing a great ride for a man that was not riding this race 24 hours ago. He's in second place there. Yeah, he's doing a fantastic ride. He's another one of the, the graduates of the, uh, the Avanti team, the NRS team. He's, he's gotten a contract at Team Sky, a, a last-minute addition to this race, as I said. Uh, as Richie Port said, he, uh, he's from Tassie. They rang him up, so we need a replacement. He got his passport, and they let him into Australia to come and do this race. <laughs> as they say, the little island off the big island. I don't know what it is, Paul, but the Tasmanians are turning out some great road racing cyclists these years. Number 61, that's Richie Port. The best Just in front all. of him is uh, Rowan Dennis, the man setting the pace for Garmin Sharp on the front end of the main field. In fact, is Nathan Haas, who was very aggressive in the People's Choice just the other day. 32, also, Adam Hansen. Also Right there. Up. Number three moving up towards the front, uh, Ben Hermans of uh, Team BMC. He'll be looking after the entrance, of course, of Cadell Evans, who's sat not on his too wheel. far behind. Sat on his back wheel as they come up the climb, and that peloton has reduced quite dramatically with this fast tempo of uh, Nathan uh, Haas at the front. If you just see around the corner, you're going to see that um, the tail of this peloton now is not too far behind. I just saw Simon Guerin sitting there in about 20th position, uh, along with Daryl Impey. Simon Clark here in the uh, bottom of our picture. That's Guerin's in Clark's wheel. Uh, Impey behind him, so staying together, staying cool, not panicking. Uh, Cadell Evans right next to them. So uh, everything under control at the moment. Evans and Guerin's first and second from the national championship, two of the really big favourites here. And you, know, you can't go past these guys on current form. They may not win the tour today, but they will set themselves up. You've got to be careful when you say that, haven't you? Evans and Gerrans. <laughs> it's so, so similar, those two names, as they are going to keep a very close eye on each other over the next uh, six days of racing. Gerrans, though, is a very clever professional bike rider. He knows when to take the opportunities. Just leaping out of the pack a little bit earlier on and getting himself that one second. Now, as we get up towards Hansen. the top of the climb, look at that power now. Adam Hansen going to be the first leader, the Skoda King of the Mountains, if he can get the maximum points. It's the only climb of the day. The crowd getting a bit excited there, cutting off the corner. But a good effort by the Queenslander as he comes up. And Hansen, I think it was, we've cut back there. Yeah, but Hansen was first over the top, so he'll be the first Skoda leader in the King of the Mountains. But more importantly, a chance to get a chance to uh, see what sort of damage has happened here. And as you can see there, look at their tempo, and he's suddenly picked it up quite dramatically. Joker written down the uh, side of his shorts there. He's the Joker in the pack here this afternoon. Wow. And look at that gap now. He's really giving it. Download the app or visit William Hill on your mobile. William Hill, the home of betting. Objective of this mission is capturing Mod Shaw. We're going in with a four man team. This op is compromised. We let them go, then we got Taliban on our back. We're not killing kids. You see this? That's an army. Lone Survivor in cinemas January 31st. Hello. Can I see your passports, please? Just the one bag to check in? Yes. Is it 
flight fire? It's quite full today. Thank you. Like getting your money's worth? Try the £1.9 sweet chilli mayo chicken or the one forty nine chicken BLC. New to the saver menu. Your underarm skin contains a diversity of natural bacteria, essential to keeping skin healthy. If this diversity is disrupted, it can affect your skin's health. New Sanex antiperspirants fight odor-causing bacteria and leave a beneficial mix of bacteria. Sanex. Keep skin healthy. This is the button that could start the journey to a firmer, flatter stomach from four weeks. Slender Tone. Start here. Great savings are ending on many sofas in the best ever DFS winter sale. The Amulet sofas now just 2 dollars but not for long, DFS. Our customer reviews tell us a lot about why people love their Kia Seed. Whether it oozes quality or that it has enough gadgets to rival a spaceship. In fact, over 10,000 customers have posted their honest reviews of our cars, which all come with the Kia 7-year warranty. See what they're saying at kia.co.uk. Even with the best training, keeping an eye on our money can be a bit of a tease. And if you're looking at your finances, the money shop can point you in the right direction. Loans up to a thousand pounds available online or from your local store. And applying for one is a walk in the park. So if you're experiencing one of life's little ups and downs, apply online through moneyshop.tv. And when you pay back in full on your original due date, we'll give you five pounds cash back for every hundred pounds you borrowed. A real treat, moneyshop.tv. Woof. And after a scintillating innings, the batsman nears his century. That's absolutely splendid. I say, a streaker and a rosa. Goodness me, what a chase. <laughs> I wonder if the rosas will catch up with them. And what about this? I say, that's much better, isn't it? <laughs> and what a shot. Oh, and he's hit the streaker. My goodness, he's a bruise. And then, take it is. Game was all right. Here's Barini. Take off again at the Stadium of Life. A battle of self-belief. This is extraordinary. It's not over yet, by the way. Really looking forward to the second leg. The great as simple as that! The Capital One Cup semi-finals. Tonight and tomorrow, coverage sponsored by Bet365. Your home of sport. To the speed these guys are riding at now, it's going to take a determined effort. The psychological takes effect too. Who is going to actually finish it off, knowing that we'll give all their energy away to, to chase them down? Arish Hiro. I mean, the, the Japanese have a real tenacity, a real fighting spirit they're renowned for, and he is not going to give it. He'll go till he just drops. And he is a good sprinter too, but he's going for goal today. Uh, and a breakaway here with his teammate, uh, out. Three hours 17, they've been going now as we run down towards finish. A very quick day of racing for a total distance of 135 kilometers. There's the relationship, but it's still 20 seconds, that gap. And these two are not going to give up. Look at the pain on Turao's face, sitting on his teammates with his got to help him. And now they're coming onto the final up and his leg. Arashiro has given it absolutely everything. He says, I'll work for you. I will give up my chance and you try and take it all the way to the finish. Here's where the hill starts coming into town. And what I'm asking myself too is, Greipel's got back there. Does he have the legs to finish it off up this very demanding straight into Angerston? A specialist in these uphill sprints. Is Michael Matthews still there? Simon Gerrans will be looking for more seconds. So it's all really up in the air at the moment, but will they catch Turau? I actually thought that Arashiro was looking stronger. He's still just outside, one kilometre to go here. The big blue banner across the road. He's got one kilometre, but it's all uphill. He's really going to struggle to hold off the peloton as the workers who are left there pick up the pace and all they want to do is drag him back oh, for the lead without a crash. We swing to the back here. There's a Belkin rider looking in a very awkward position there on the back side of the road. So as they start to move now, this it looks like the long, lanky figure of Rory Sutherland here. 
He's a good climber, he's a good time trialist, he's not a very good sprinter. And it is Rory Sutherland, he swings to the right of it, of the pictures here. That looks like Michael Matthews dead center as well. Well, we see Michael Matthews coming up on the, the right-hand side, Simon Clark in his wheel, Daryl Impey that actually is, with Simon Gerrans in his wheel. They're gonna catch Rory Sutherland. The lotto train are gonna go straight on past him to take Greipel. Gavazzi's there also from uh, Astana, but watch this lead out from Daryl Impey. He really knows what he's doing. Well, Gero's just taking Greipel's wheel now. He's gonna ride that in and try and come off it. As they come around that bend there, it is indeed Daryl Impey, the, the man that wore the yellow jersey in the Tour de France, the first African ever trying to lead out the man. He took the yellow jersey from his own teammate, Simon Gerrans, who wants the bonuses. Gerrans is jumping onto the back wheel of Andre Greipel. There's gonna be no stopping Andre Greipel, though. And Gerrans is gonna take him on. This is incredible ride if he gets it. And I think he did. Simon Gerrans has just pulled off one of the greatest wins of his career. He took on Greipel and he beat him. Just like in last year's Tour de France, he took on Sagan, he beat him. Similar sort of situation. He's taken on Greipel here on a finish that it suits Simon down to the ground, but he's taken on one of the fastest sprinters in the world, one of the most powerful men to ever well, step onto a bike, and beaten him. But Robbie, what a day out for the champion of Australia. A 10 second win bonus. He snuck a second out on the course as we go back to have a look at the crash here which happened uh, just short of the uh, one kilometer marker by the look of it. A touch of wheels, far left. And a bit of a handstand there by Jack Haig while on the road there, we left uh, one rider over on the far left. Now this was the capture of Rory Sutherland, so close to the finish. The lead out looked perfect by Lotto for Andre Greipel, but wait for the arrival on his shoulder of Simon Gerrans. And here's the perfect thing that Gerrans does. He lets Impey, Impey go and go to the front. Greipel takes the wheel. Gerrans slots himself in on Greipel's wheel. He knows he's got a perfect sit. He knows he's the fastest guy. He's the one he has to beat. Now, this is a long way up to this finish line. And when they come around this corner and see the finish, Greipel goes. But this is actually a very long way. Simon sets himself in the slipstream and he comes off him. And I tell you what, Simon is very, very fast, but he's also much fresher and he's able to nip around Andre Greipel. Yeah. I mean, I think that's a photo he'll want to save and put it's up somewhere. It's slightly uphill and that's what's done it uh, because it, the Greipel again has gone too early and slightly uphill finish. He's slowed and Gerrans has not slowed. Steel von Hoff there is the rider who's crossed the line in third place, the Criterium champion of Australia. But this is going to be a big day out for Simon Gerrans. Not just the stage win for Oliver Greenedge, but... A 10 second win bonus, one taken out on course. He's going to be sitting pretty going into day two. Well, Simon Gerrans, I mean, we're talking about uh, the sprinters. We're talking about Andre Greipel, and you, a week after winning the national championships, pop out of the pack like that. Um, yeah, well, I guess I've surprised a few today, myself included. Uh, yeah, obviously, Andre's one of the fastest guys going around, so um, I'm pretty pleased to be able to get over him on the line there. But um, that was a tough final. Everyone was pretty tired coming to the finish, so. I thought that might have taken the sting out of his legs just a little bit, and uh, I left my sprint really late. It was also a headwind. I was just able to get by him. Quite astute, though. The second time through Bethany, jumping out of the pack for a single second, you realise this race is about seconds. Yeah, definitely. Um, we see every year this race is won or lost by just a matter of seconds, so uh, um, every second counts, and uh, you've got to take every opportunity as it comes up. Yes, every second certainly counted today for Simon Gerrans. Uh, his 10-second win bonus, finishing ahead of Andre Greipel, Steele von Hoff, Diego Ulysses, Maxime Bouet, and Francesco Cavazzi. Cadell Evans is in ninth place there, significantly free, perhaps. As uh, Simon Gerrans salutes the crowd here as the stage winner. He's third, historically, in this event. He also leads in the Adam Internet Sprint Competition. Gerrans, 17 points in this, but it will be Andrew Greipel who will wear this blue leader's jersey tomorrow, which uh, again, sponsored by Adam Internet. He can't wear two jerseys, can he? That's a big crowd here, that awaits now for the next result. This is it, the Skoda King of the Mountains. Only one climb today at Mengele Hill. Adam Hansen won now the 16 points. Axel Beaumont is in second place. So, the Skoda green spotted jersey on the shoulders of the Queenslander uh, tomorrow. To the riders who distinguish themselves and here we have Carlos Verona the best young rider here sponsored by Cycle Instead he gets to wear the white jersey 
the green and most competitive rider jersey for Europe car. That's on the shoulders of Will Clark, who was the last to be caught in that breakaway. And the Oakage Santos jersey, well, that most coveted jersey of the race is on the shoulders of a race favourite in Simon Gerrans. He leads this race tonight. Five seconds over Andre Greipel, seven over Steele von Hoff. Big moments for the young champion of Australia. Big job to defend it, though, from tomorrow. So a good start, certainly for the Australians in this race and specifically for Simon Gerrans. Tomorrow it's a 150km ride in the Adelaide Hills. Until then, on behalf of Robin McEwen and Paul Sherwin, it's goodbye from me, Phil Liggins.